Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that if you're returning. How you doing? What we're going to talk about today is the greater good. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many different, different aspects to this, but I want you to just listen to what I have to say. Okay. Central planners are pulling double shifts. They are contriving plans and proposals to control what you consume, how you travel, how you cook, where your money is spent, and so much more. You know who we're talking about, right? We're talking about the WEFers, the UN, the IMF, the World Bank, Central Bankers, Washington lobbyists. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I'm even talking about that nosy neighbor that you've got too, okay? So what is their deal? Why? Why do they have to have this, you know, control, right? Could something more devious be guiding their advancements? Well, in Das Kapital, for example, you know who Karl Marx is, right? Okay. Well, <clears throat> Karl Marx bemoans capitalism for exploiting labor to produce surplus value. His main gripe was that 19th century laborers worked for mere wages while some factory owners got filthy rich. So to eradicate this class struggle as he perceived it, Marx proposed a socialist mode of production coordinated through conscious economic planning and he believed that distributing products from each according to his ability to each according to his needs would bring about his vision of a worker's paradise if there is such a thing and many took the bait hook line and sinker and they were all in with the promise of something for nothing uh, administered by the state that was too enticing to pass up right yet any country that has ever attempted to put these ridiculous ideas into practice has been left with an economy that fails to deliver the abundance for all which Marx had advertised. Moreover, this comes at the expense of individual freedom and liberty. So in regard in this regard, what would Marx think of the political economy that's currently pervading much of the Western world? Would it be in his favor of the vast elite political class that's living off the surplus value produced by capitalism? Would he deduce the political class, therefore exploiting labor? Maybe this would be a troublesome conclusion for a man whose writing serves as justification for using politics to direct capital and boss people around, so long as it's for the greater good, whatever that may be. So the growth of, of government in so many countries over the past 120 years has been rather extreme. And as governments have grown in scope and reach, a massive administrative state had been erected to advance its will. This is all money down the rat hole or down the drain, really. National defense, especially in the U.S., is the ultimate slayer of capital. However, more recently, the supposed sea crisis has supplied a unique justification for massive government uh, intervention under the cover of providing for the greater good. Now, energy, transportation, uh, finance, residential development, agriculture, mining, technology, appliances, media, yada, 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 okay? There's hardly a sector of the economy that has not been corrupted by this sea crisis politics. The excuse it does provide for government intervention on a grander scale seems to produce a religious experience among the conditioned masses. 
So the examples range far and wide. In Marx's homeland, for instance, the German government is currently putting the final touches on its planned national nutrition strategy. And the objective is to transform the food system while fighting sea change and minimizing the slaughter of innocent animals. And this, in short, means replacing schnitzel consumption with what? Plants. So the strategy notes that Germany's agriculture and their food systems generate approximately one quarter of its greenhouse gas emissions. And to meet its goal of becoming carbon neutral by the year of 2045, it needs to transform how food is produced. Organic farming and pro promotional seasonal, regional grown, plant-based foods are some of the transformation strategies proposals. So we, we need to think that the national nutrition planners are just asking for trouble here. So wherever a central planning authority has commanded what crops to plant and the means and the methods for agricultural production, disaster has also followed. In fact, top-down planning of food production has been responsible of the world's greatest collective famines. The rollout of centralized uh, agriculture by the Soviet Union was responsible for an estimated six to nine million human deaths in the Soviet famine from 1930 to 1933. So similarly, okay, Mayo, M-A-O, the, uh, the Great Leap Forward from 30 years later brought the Great Chinese Famine as the production quotas of planned far, uh, farming fell short, something rather curious happened. The numbers reported to the central government increased. Everything looked great on paper, but everything was not great. In truth, everything was awful. The human death toll estimates for this man-induced starvation ranged from 15 to 55 million. So nonetheless, the planners are at it again all for the supposed intent of controlling what? The weather. So implementation of Germany's national nutrition strategy is expected to begin in 2025. Perhaps the country will succeed where others have failed, though it seems very unlikely. So ultimately it will depend on how far they actually make it. The further they push, the further, the more they're gonna fail. And this is why. You know, the, the economy is a complex living organism. It continuously evolves as it always is subject to change. One relationship at, at a moment can be completely different at another moment. Supply and demand are incessantly uh, adjusting and readjusting to meet conditions of the market. These continuous interactions provide a natural and efficient response to supply shortages and glutes. In the case of agriculture in countries with minimal government interference, the food is almost always in abundance. Any short shortages are quickly resolved. So in an economy with minimal government interference, a farmer does not look to a governing board to know what crops to produce. He looks to prices. So if the price of wheat is high, that means the supply, the, 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 the supply of wheat is low though so what does he do he plants the wheat because of that moment the wheat is what people need the most price signals communicates this so once the supply of wheat increases and the price falls he may need another crop option to maximize the value of his land perhaps milo or cattle feed demanding on the higher price so consequently he will plant the milo the cows then get fed, an adequate uh, supply of milk comes in, and it's brought to the market. So once the excess supply of harvested wheat is consumed and its price increases, he goes back to planting wheat. Though it all, through it all, it, 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 it remain, the stomachs remain full, prices remain within orbit, central planners refuse to accept the bottoms up, 
organic disorder for naturally determining supply and distributing goods and services. They want to step all over it. They want to plan and control things. They want to direct the flow of capital to preferred industries and providers. And they want to take a cut from that action. And when the foolish planners attempt to circumvent market determined price signals, bad stuff happens. So sometimes the supply of a certain good crashes and its price skyrockets and the planners blame the mess of their own making on greedy capitalists. And they may even try to exploit it through exacting a windfall profits tax. And occasionally, however, when there's a good enough excuse, the planners make things especially ugly and entire populations will starve. So I have a question for you. Are you willing to starve for the greater good? And I want you to think about that because that's exactly what could possibly happen. And I don't think any of us are exactly prepared for anything like that. All right, guys, I'm out of here, okay? I will see you in the next one. You stay safe, you stay positive, you keep prepping, and as always, fear less. Ciao.